morning. I'm Stephanie Mahan, Arizona Capital Museum Administrator, and I'm joined today by Carissa Whiting, our museum curator. Um, and we are here in the Polly Rosenbaum building in the uh, pod is what we call it, but this is where we store all of actually passed a suffrage amendment in 1912. Um, and you can see on this ballot here, this is an original ballot from that election. The language for the initiative is to amend um, the constitution of the state of Arizona, granting to the citizens of the state of Arizona, regardless of sex, the right of suffrage and the right to hold public office. Here we have a campaign pin for Isabella Greenway. Greenway was elected in 1933 as the first woman to represent Arizona in Congress. She was actually a really good friend of Eleanor Roosevelt and actually was a bridesmaid in her wedding. Greenway founded Tucson's Arizona Inn and also Arizona Hut, a furniture factory employing disabled veterans and their families. She also purchased a ranch in Williams, Arizona and was very successful. So here we have some items for Rose Mofford, who was Arizona's first woman governor. Rose Mofford was born in 1922 in Globe, Arizona. And a lot of folks don't know she was actually an athlete. So she played softball and she actually played with the Cantaloupe Queens. And when she was 17 years old, she went to Madison Square Garden with that softball team and um, they played an exhibition game. When she turned 18, she was hired to work as a secretary or an administrative assistant in the state legislature. And she just kind of worked her way up from there. She was hired as uh, Secretary of State Wesley Boland's executive assistant. And in 1977, when Governor Castro left office to become the ambassador to Argentina, uh, Secretary Boland then succeeded to the governor's office and he appointed Mofford to finish out his term as a Secretary of State. Sadly, he passed away pretty quickly and because um, Mofford hadn't been appointed or because she hadn't been elected, she was not able to succeed to that office. So um, Attorney General Bruce Babbitt was next in line and that's how we got Governor Babbitt. Later on, Arizona sadly lost another governor when Governor Meekum was impeached and this time she had been elected to the office. So she did succeed and she became Arizona's first woman governor. I should also note that she was Arizona's first woman secretary of state as well. When she became Arizona's first governor, she was really well liked by both parties. Um, she was referred to by some as the healing governor because she um, she had to kind of take on a, a role in a really hard time when there was, you know, a challenge in our state leadership. Um, so we have a um, kind of like a picket sign that people had for her or, or a yard sign. And then we also have um, a bumper sticker and a campaign pin. And then this here is one of my favorites. It's, um, it's actually a football schedule for U of A and ASU. Um, and it says, keep Rose Mofford as secretary of state. And we also have a, a campaign pin here for Governor Jane Hull. She was the second woman governor elected in Arizona. Much like Governor Mofford, she was the Secretary of State and she ascended to the governor's office when um, Governor Fife Symington resigned in 1997. She ran for re-election and she won. So she became the first woman to be elected to the Arizona office of the governor. And before she was Secretary of State and governor, she was also a legislator for many years in, in the Arizona uh, state legislature and she was the first woman um, elected as the Speaker of the House. Sadly, she passed away earlier this year in April. Now let's talk about governors. Arizona has had four women governors, the most of any state. And up until a few years ago, we were the only state to have consecutive women governors as well. Arizona wasn't just the first state to have four women serve as governor. In 1998, Arizona was the first state to have all women serving in the executive offices, and there are five of them. Governor Jane D. Hall, Secretary of State Betsy Bayless, Attorney General Janet Napolitano, Treasurer Carol Springer, and Superintendent of Public Instruction Lisa Graham Keegan became a national sensation. These women were known as the Fab Five. Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, also a first, swore each of them in on Inauguration Day. Here we have a program signed by all of them, including Justice O'Connor. Before we wrap up, we have to talk about Polly Rosenbaum, um, who this building is actually named after. Polly Rosenbaum was the longest serving legislator in the Arizona State Legislature. She, like Governor Mofford, she started her career at the Capitol as an administrative assistant in the House, and that's where she met her husband, William Rosenbaum. Sadly, Representative Rosenbaum passed away um, not too long after they were married, and she was actually appointed to um, finish his term. 
she ended up running for re-election and she was re-elected 22 times. So she actually served for 44 years. And that concludes this portion of our tour. Um, we actually have a new collection of campaign memorabilia on the Arizona Memory Project. So to see more uh, materials like you saw today, please visit that website. You can also learn more about the Arizona Capitol Museum by visiting www.azlibrary.gov slash azcm. Thank you.